Hey folks, coming up today, we're talking about the Super Bowl, Valentine's Day, and a spring break scam. Stay tuned for more on Buckeye TV. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Matt Goldman. And I'm Connor Bell. We're going to be covering a ton on Buckeye TV, including snow days. After a shocking turn of events, the Kansas City Chiefs took down the Philadelphia Eagles in a 38-35 win in the final moments of the game. Connor Bell has more on the story. This is Connor Bell reporting for Buckeye TV One. The Super Bowl is the biggest sporting event in America by far every year. We're going to go and interview some students and figure out what they have to say about it. The Super Bowl is always an intense game. The final score can often leave fans heartbroken and families torn apart. Before the game, we asked students who they thought would take the win this year. Chiefs aren't a bad pick as like an underdog, but like if I'm putting money down and it's an even split, I would take the Eagles. I think the majority of my friends are gonna be riding for the Chiefs on this one. Brianna owned the stage in her halftime show. Here's what students had to say in anticipation for her performance. So we've also got a big halftime show coming up. Um, we have Rihanna coming. What do you guys think about that? I'm super excited just to see her perform again. Like I feel like it's been a it's been a minute. Like we haven't yeah. seen her around a lot, so I'm really excited. Absolutely. Right. Like I, I agree with that. Like she hasn't released music for a while. I know she was on the Black Panther soundtrack, but other than that, like we haven't seen a lot from her and I think that her performance is gonna be really good. In a study done by CBS, the fan favorite commercial of the game was Crown Royals Thank You Canada. That's all for Super Bowl 57. Signing off for Buckeye TV One, I'm Connor Bell. Everyone knows the best part of the Super Bowl is the commercials. This year's top rated Super Bowl commercial, according to USA Today, is the Farmer's Dog commercial. The commercial is about a girl and her adorable chocolate lab. The commercial takes us through a beautiful story about their lives together. Some of the other commercials that deserve an honorable mention are the Crown Royal Thank You Canada and the Rocket Mortgage Barbie Dream House with Anna Kendrick. As you probably remember, exams used to be in person, but now they're online. Our reporter, Christine DeFour, has the latest. I've had a mix of both, but most of them have been in person. When I first started out, we did exams in person. So we would have 24 to 25 students taking a test. At the rise of the COVID-19 pandemic, many professors transitioned to online exams. However, even coming out of the pandemic, some professors have chosen to remain online for their exams. What style of exams do you prefer? I prefer online exams because they're a lot less stressful and I can do them in the comfort of my own house. I'm surprised, but I actually like online better. Um, or only because I don't have to, it doesn't take as long. The students can take their time. They're in their own space. I know I personally enjoy online exams for the same reasons as Isabella mentioned. Which exams do you guys prefer? I'm Christina DeFiori from Buckeye TV. Have a great day. Matt journeys have been ruining our nation. Our own Katie Stubeck has the story on how students at Ohio State feel about our nation with gun control. According to CNN, there have been 67 mass shootings this year, and it is only February. I'm here at the Bjorn High, one of the most populated student apartments that is off campus, to speak with students about gun control. Five years after the Parkland shooting, Michigan State students had to fear for their lives as well. Gun control laws in place have not helped lower the amount of mass shootings, and at this rate, there could be 335 mass shootings by the end of the year. Can you tell me your opinion on gun control? Ooh, I think there has to be tighter gun control laws. There have been way too many mass shootings this year and in the past five years in general. It's like becoming a sort of a norm. Do you feel unsafe at school? Um, I guess I don't really think about it much, but everyone says, you know, really, like, think it's going to be you until it's you. So, 
what laws are you hoping to see? Just tighter gun laws. Um, restrictions on military grade guns. Do you feel unsafe in school? Like, in, sometimes I get scared. It's always good. Like, run in and hook it out. Move one out. What would you like to see change? And I feel like there's, at this point, you can't really control it because people are not going to listen or abide by rules. Many students at Ohio State are hoping for stricter gun control laws. I'm Katie Stupak, Buckeye TV. Next up, we'll be covering Valentine's Day. And is spring break actually a scam? We'll keep you posted on these stories after the break. Love is in the air on OSU campus, or is it? Buckeye TV reporter Elizabeth checked in with OSU students uh, for their opinions on Valentine's Day. Some students look forward to Valentine's Day and others do not Some students consider it a corporate scam, while others look forward to the holiday's traditions. Valentine's Day can be traced back to ancient Roman and Christian traditions, but today we celebrate Valentine's Day a little differently. My plans for Valentine's Day are to be at my dorm studying because I have to exam the next day. I actually have a midterm on Valentine's Day, like in the evening too, so I can't do anything. Not only has the holiday slipped away from its origins, some students feel that it is just the money grab for companies. I don't think it's really a holiday. I mean, it's not very widely celebrated. I think it's kind of just like esteemed to get money out of people. Not all students feel this way though. Other students take the time to appreciate things like OSU's Buckeye Love Week and the sweet treats that come from Valentine's Day. I think Valentine's Day is a real hallway holiday. I think a lot of people celebrate it, and I think it makes a lot of money, so it has to be a holiday. I think Valentine's Day is a real holiday. It's just kind of, you know, like one of the other ones where there's not a whole lot of significance to it, but I think it's cute, so I'll say it's real. Students may not agree that Valentine's Day is a real holiday, but one thing that they can agree on is that Valentine's Day produces some of the best candy. And what's your favorite Valentine's Day favorite candy? Anything chocolate, especially best coconut in it. Any chocolate is my favorite. Regardless of how you feel about Valentine's Day, it looks like it's going to be staying around for a while. For Buckeye TV, Elizabeth Bannon. Spring break is seen as a time for fun in the sun, but is it really? Is spring break a scam? We go to the Eric Six to see just what the buzz is on spring break. So spring break is quickly approaching for LSU, but with heavy workloads, will students be breaking or will they be working during their spring break? Is spring break a scam? I will be interviewing LSU students to see their opinions on spring break and if they'll be breaking. Will you be breaking or working on your spring break? Like, will you be doing assignments or taking a break? I will be going to Mexico for my spring break. Um, I will be breaking. Um, I have the first half I'm going to see my best friend and then the second half I'm going to be hanging out with family. Do you ever feel pressure to work during your allocated breaks from LSU, like from professors or from karma notifications ever? There are definitely some times where, you know, you'll get that karma notification while you're like breaking or like taking that time off and it's like, oh, yeah, there's still schoolwork to do. Do you feel spring break is a scam? No, no, I think it's needed. Do you ever feel pressure to work during um, your breaks that the college gives you with class emails and karma notifications? I feel like at the beginning of break, yeah, you just got to get it out of the way. But like, I try to like do it before so I could actually enjoy my break. So for most OSU students, spring break is a time for relaxation. So spring break will stay. From Buckeye TV, the reporting, Eric Six. Music can be found all over Columbus, but some students at Ohio State might want a source of music closer to them. Matt Ratterman has the scoop. I'm here just outside of the Weigel Auditorium where the Ohio State Jazz Bands will be performing their Jazz Big Band Showcase. These bands have been preparing since the beginning of the semester and now finally get to show off what they have made. I'm here with some students and staff to see how they're feeling about tonight's show. The Jazz Big Band Showcase here at Ohio State is comprised of three Ohio State Jazz Bands. The first one being the Jazz Workshop Big Band conducted by Chris Keith the second one being the Jazz Lab Big Band, conducted by Chris Anderson and Keith Newton. The third one being the Jazz Ensemble, conducted by Mike Smith. All these bands play two or more songs. Now, let's see what some of the students and conductors had to say about this event. What are you feeling for today's concert? How do you feel about it? I'm feeling super excited. Um, this is... Uh, the first concert in a long while we've done where there's not necessarily a composer theme where we play like one composer's charts for the whole concert. We're just playing 
a big diversity of a lot of really challenging music that's really uh really difficult and i think it's going to push us a lot and we're going to sound really great as a result of that for me it's very fulfilling because i get to see it there's there's a there's a concept called outcome based education and outcome based education is to be able at the end of the class or at the end of a test to show the outcomes of everything that you've done in the classroom being in a band of any kind or ensemble of any kind is the ultimate outcome based education what you see tonight is exactly what we've been working on in class and we, you see the results of that right away so for all those local and ohio state jazz connoisseurs out there look ahead for future jazz showcases and events for more from reporting from buckeye tv this is matt ratterman have you ever wondered how ohio state keeps campus sidewalks and roadways clear during a winter storm buckeye tv reporter brandon ebert went out to discover who is responsible for making travel to class as safe as possible. Don't let the sunshine fool you today, folks, as we are still in the midst of a very brisk winter here in Columbus, Ohio. So how does Ohio State plan on keeping students and faculty traveling safely to class when winter precipitation inevitably arrives? The Facilities, Operations, and Development is the department on campus that is in charge of clearing the campus area. But what else is the department responsible for? We take care of basically everything outside in the Warm season, we're mowing, leaves, and then cold season, snow. So it's everything from construction to maintenance, custodial, and landscaping. The department works hard to be malleable when planning for winter storms. Depends on each storm. We try to pre-plan for a storm. So if we know an event's coming and we have an estimate of how much snowfall we're going to have, we try to man the shop accordingly with that. Each area has its own things you have to address. Um, hospitals, the main thing, main walks. And then you just kind of adapt to each storm. The campus area is not easily cleared off. If there's 130 miles of sidewalk on campus, 40 miles of roadway. Just keep in mind that we do what we can, but like I said, stuff wasn't designed for what we do. With such a difficult task at hand, why do these folks enjoy working within the FOD? They're the people, to be honest with you. We have a good crew. Everybody gets well together. Uh, being on a work outside, that's the best. It's not always rainbows and sunshine here on campus, but thanks to some kind folks, we are still able to travel to classes safely. Reporting live for Buckeye TV, I'm Brandon Ebert. Coming up, we'll be covering crosswalk safety and the job market for our graduating seniors. We'll keep you posted. Stay tuned on these stories after the break. Ohio State students are concerned about crosswalk safety and want solutions fast. Here's Jessica Langer's story with the latest. Right now, I am sitting in front of the crosswalk in front of Target on High Street. It is one that many students identify as unsafe crossing during the day and at night. Ohio State students are unhappy with the safety of two popular crosswalks that connect campus to High Street, in front of Donato's and the other in front of Target. Maddie Parson, a second year in accounting, has had close calls by almost getting hit by cars. There's definitely one times where like, I've crossed and the car is just like, I like had to sprint across. I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have gone. <laughs> and I'm like, that's really dumb. But I mean, I'm still standing here today, so I've made it, obviously. Sophia Tiemann, fourth year in psychology, said the intersection at Target has a lot of cars trying to turn, cross, or park at the same time. Because the cars don't care about, about us at all when we walk, especially students, and they actually make fun of us or they yell. Like sometimes, like, hey, like, get out of the way or like curse at us. So it's like, well, that's nice. Thank you. I'm just trying to walk. It's like, okay, I don't want to die today, but thank you. <laughs> Students say the crosswalk is more dangerous at night than during the day. Ohio Department of Public Safety Crash Statistics System reports since the start of the academic school year, 43 crashes have been filed by university police, seven of which involve pedestrians. Five crashes involve cars either failing to obey traffic control devices, not staying in the marked lane, and not yielding to pedestrians. Students suggest changes such as traffic lights, more signs to show pedestrians will cross, and adding more light to brighten the crosswalks at night. Bailey Metzner, second year in environmental science at Ohio State and the city of Columbus should make more of an effort for crosswalk safety. I feel like it's definitely not that big of an issue or problem to just put lights there. Like, there's a few around campus already. So it's an invest. Katie McDevitt, Commissioner of the University Area Commission, said the committee is designing a problem map and a solutions map to have a more organized approach just to the traffic safety issues. The map is in the developing stages, and McDevitt said she hopes students could soon collaborate on the maps to help address the issue. 
I'm Jessica Langer. Graduating seniors upcoming have some anxieties about the job market for their future lives. Our Athena Markowski has the story on the latest. Hey Buckeye seniors, are you feeling the impending doom that comes with graduation? I chatted with a few seniors about their anxieties about the job market and postgraduate life. Yeah, so I'm really stressed about having to find a job, even though I'm applying to basically as many places as I can, different cities, different fields, um, but I'm not really hearing back, and if I am, it's not great news. Um, and I'm also finding that they're like asking a lot of you, like beyond what you would expect. Like just having a bachelor's degree in something is not enough. They really want to have it. They want you to have experience that you just wouldn't have at our age, like multiple years of work in a field that if you wouldn't have as like a fresh college graduate. Crouch also added that the question of her living situation is an added stressor. Senior economics major Lauren Round agreed that the 90-day mark to graduation added another level of anxiety to her postgraduate stress. Um, I think, you know, doing a lot of interviewing, networking, and all these things, and it's almost like you have a boat, like you're fishing, and you have a million lines, like, like hanging off your boat, and you're just hoping that one bites, and there's really nothing you can do to move along the process except put more lines in. Seniors still navigating the job market can visit careers.osu.edu for information and help. Reporting for Buckeye TV, this is Athena Markowski. David Graham, who was once an Ohio State student and lacrosse player, is now the CEO of a new social media app called FuseMe. David Stein has the story. Communication is key when it comes to the college lifestyle. A new platform called FuseMe looks to become the next big social media platform. Have you ever heard of Fuse Me before? No, I have not. Yeah, in my Carmen inbox. I have not heard of Fuse Me before. I have. I've gotten a couple texts about it. I have no idea what it is. I got the opportunity to sit down with the Fuse Me CEO, David Graham, to find out what Fuse Me is. Um, I like to position it as uh, the all-in-one social media platform for your college, right? And so the the, the key part, I mean... One of the main things that differentiates us is each university community is a standalone micro community. So an Ohio State student doesn't interact with students that aren't Ohio State students. They can only interact and engage with students inside those university walls. With FuseMe being new to the social media industry, I was curious to see what current apps students use to connect and how FuseMe can fit into the social media industry. Uh, probably texting people. Probably iMessage and Instagram. I think Snapchat and GroupMe for bigger like classes and stuff. Uh, usually just uh, GroupMe or uh, iMessage. Just have one app. It does everything. Um, and it really kind of eliminates the, the friction of balancing between app to app um, and just makes it a more seamless experience for the student. Having spent a year at Ohio State, David Graham shares how Ohio State has contributed to FuseMe's success. The Ohio State network has been incredibly supportive um, both from the investor network, but also just the school as a whole, um, really just making sure that I've been supported throughout my journey. Um, so, so really, really appreciate that. This has been David Stein reporting for Buckeye TV. For our last segment, we'll be talking about the rise of gas prices and Ohio State and Michigan battling on the lake coming up next on Buckeye TV. Gas prices have been in high gear for the last six months and college students are hoping to see some decrease in prices in the campus area, as our own Matt Goldman has the story. We're here on Summit Street, one of the busiest streets in all of Columbus, to speak with students about the high gas prices going on around in America and here in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, I mean, it, it really just hurts kind of the pockets of everybody that's struggling with income and as a student that's not really making anything and paying thousands of dollars to study uh, it doesn't help that I'm spending so much on gas. 365 is really hurting right now. For me as a college student, I would say that I would definitely prefer if they were uh, a little lower. Um, I can't really be affording to be spending this much money on uh, gas prices, but it is what it is. Hopefully they'll go down in the next you know year. Like I'm, I'm commute to school a lot, so they're definitely it's definitely one of the things I'm spending a lot of money on. Uh, it's up there, I would say, probably top three things. Say so gas, gas prices now, they get a little bit out of hand. Right, four or five dollars a gallon. I'm used to say about like 275, probably three on the thing, but uh, 
I'm confused by this. They lost. With gas continuing to be expensive, the average regular gallon of gas, according to AAA, is 350 a gallon. Experts are saying the average price could reach to $4 this year. Around the campus area, students are hoping gas prices get lower. But for now, I'm Matt Goldman, Buckeye TV. Yeah, Matt, I hope these prices do go down. It's been a little uh, too high lately, no doubt about it. I'm Connor Bell. And I'm Matt Goldman. See you later, folks. We'll catch you next time on Buckeye, Buckeye TV. TV.